Welcome to a new update and today we are not going to discuss technicals. We are going to kickstart a new series and this time it's about fundamentals. And as you know, I want to make a bigger YouTube channel with more diverse um, content. And that is also educational material, that is also fundamental material, that is also all the markets that we are going to discuss. And the first one we are kicking off today is the fundamental video in which we are going to discuss Avalanche. An Avalanche ecosystem is the one that is going quite fast in terms of price movements recently, but also in terms of fundamental growth. And not only Avalanche has been doing great, but also Solana and also some other layer ones as it's layer one season. But before we go to continue, do not forget to subscribe beneath and like the YouTube update and also do not forget to check out my Twitter and Instagram where you can become a where you can find content on a daily basis on the markets that I'm providing. So Avalanche and not only Avalanche, but the entire crypto industry is booming heavily and DeFi is currently being uh, grown towards the next layer, which is we've had the DeFi boom in 2020 and now we are at the kickstart of another DeFi boom. And we can also see that the DeFi itself showed the first real search on Ethereum, however, Ethereum has scalability issues, which remains to be an issue um, while it's the entire DeFi ecosystem is growing heavily. And through the fact that Ethereum has scalability issues, uh, we do know that um, our money has been going or capital has been flowing into other ecosystem. And that's why we recently see the layer ones doing absolutely massive. First one was Binance Smart Chain with Binance last year. However, that one is extremely centralized, although it's quite faster than Ethereum. And recently we can see that with Solana, Cardano, Cosmos, Phantom and Avalanche, the entire ecosystem is growing and money is going towards other layer ones. So today we're going to discuss Avalanche. And um, this one was originally founded in 2018 and the token and mainnet have been launched in um, September 2020. So we've got the website here. Also, if you're interested in the entire ecosystem, I've done an interview with Kevin Sekniki, COO of Ava Labs, and also with the CEO of Ava Launch, uh, which is the launchpad. And that's what we're going to discuss later in this update about Avalanche as well. So this is the website about Avalanche. We're diving deeper into the project itself in a little bit, but first, the team and the team is uh, Avalabs. That's the team behind the actual project of Avalanche. Um, they have a very big team, and as you can see, they have made it in a very uh, well. You can see everyone here. It's not really easy to understand who's who, but um, the CFO is important, Chris Lavery, but also, of course, the CEO, which is also well known on social media, I mean Gun Cyril. Um, the president as well, who is John Wu, and of course the one that I've been interviewing, Kevin Sikniki, who is the COO. And finally, the chief protocol architect is Moavan Ted Yin. So this is a very big team behind Avalanche, and that is called Ava Labs. Um, and that is also behind several other projects, but Avalanche is the key feature here. Looking at some key features that Avalanche has. Well, Avalanche is an open source layer zero smart contract platform that aims to become the internet of finance by offering high speed transactions with fast finality and application specific customizable blockchains. So Avalanche is designed to allow for high transaction, high fast transaction finality and high transactions per second uh, while maintaining high decentralization as well as further scalability enabled by its own version of a delegated proof of stake consensus mechanism, something we'll be touching on in a little bit. So finality within two seconds, high scalability, 45, 4,500 TPS at the moment, which increased with the number of nodes. As discussed, it's a layer zero blockchain, meaning that projects can rent fully customizable blockchains on Avalanche. And that is including smart contract languages, a virtual machine, which we are also going to dive in. It's comparable as the uh, Ethereum's EVM, which makes it easier for Ethereum based developers to move to Avalanche. Consensus mechanism and also the tokenomics. 
The offering of smart contract languages and virtual machines is still limited, but will be expanded in the future. So looking into the actual structure of Avalanche at this point, uh, we've got the subnet and validators in the Avalanche ecosystem form subnets, which work together to reach consensus on the state of one or more blockchains. Each blockchain is validated by a single subnet. So validators can decide which subnets they want to join and can be part of multiple. All members of a subnet um, are automatically members of the primary network itself. So there are customizable blockchains as well. And the creator of a blockchain or avalanche can decide what the criteria must be for validators in order to join a subnet and run consensus on the chain or even pick them specifically. The criteria could be things like validators must be located in a given country, validators must pass a KYC AML check, validators must hold a certain a license. This allows people to easily set up permission or permissionless blockchains. These customizable features make it easier for businesses to remain compliant with local, local regulation. The fast finality and scalability while maintaining decentralization make it a good chain for the use of DeFi focused apps as users have fast and low transaction costs. The customizability and creation of chains make it a good pick for companies and organizations to enter the cryptocurrency blockchain industry as they can enter it on their own terms. These blockchains all together can easily interoperate with each other should the creators opt for this. So, that is this uh, this part that we have discussed about the cost of blockchains, but how is the consensus and the core of the consensus? Well, as its core, Avalanche has three different standard chains, which you can all find on the picture here. And th this is all the primary network, and it's an X chain, a P chain, and a C chain. The X chain is essentially a decentralized platform that allows for the creation and trading of digital assets, AVAX, AVAX, the, na the uh, native token is traded on this chain as well. The main chain uses the Avalanche consensus mechanism or snowball. Um, this is a directed acyclic graph DAC instead of a blockchain. So the P chain, the platform chain, handles everything surrounding the validators for all of the different blockchain. It uses the snowman consensus protocol. And then the C chain is an instance of the EVM. So all Ethereum based smart contracts are compatible. The main difference is the consensus mechanism, which allows for the fast finality and scalability. It uses the snowman consensus protocol as well, just like the P chain. So looking further at this overall consensus uh, protocol, um, Avalanche uses a form of leaderless delegated proof of stake. And, but instead of a blockchain, the Avalanche consensus mechanism is used for a DAG, which is consists of batches of transactions called vertices or a vertex. This looks as follows. Um, that's what we've got over here. Because of a relatively small random number of validators queried for every vertex, consensus can be reached relatively fast in a case the quorum is reached. So not every validator has to be queried for every single vertex allowing for speed and less message overhead by validators as well as the vertices to be approved alongside each other. This is also what makes the network highly scalable as new validators can vote on different vertices alongside other validators. According to Ava Labs, in order to take over the network, malicious actors would have to seize 80% of the nodes, making it a lot safer than others. So, what we can see here on the uh, on the picture itself is also the differences between Bitcoin, Ethereum, and in this case Polkadot and Avalanche. So the transaction finality is shorter, two seconds, while Bitcoin is 60 minutes. Energy efficient, yes, CPU optimal, number of validators, thousands of nodes, decentralization, cyber protection, proof of stake, um, and safety threshold 80%, as you can see on the picture here. The snowman consensus mechanism used to be the, uh, used by the P chain and C chain has a similar process to the avalanche consensus me mechanism um, as we can see here. 
However, instead of forming a DAG, it usually actually forms a linear blockchain. So validates vote on block blocks instead of purchases. And not only the entire ecosystem is designed like this, they are also partnering up a lot at this point. So the first real um, partnership that they have been going further with is the Congress of the Mexican state of Quantana Roo is implementing Avalanche technology to become the first national Congress to use it for the digital certification of its le legislative. Also, the second one is Rival, which is another one created by Ava Labs, as you just discussed in the beginning. Ava Labs is having multiple projects and one of them is Rival itself. It opens up the litigation market by allowing to buy and sell tokens that represent shares in a litigation and access a multi-billion dollar market for the first time documentation. These two are great examples of what is possible at this point with customizable chains of Avalanche. So next thing is that they've also been growing heavily in creating partnerships and gathering money for the DeFi ecosystems. And as you can see on the picture, this is the first one which has been announced recently, but there's more. So AT AT Capital, OKX, Block Dream Ventures, Blockwater, IOSG, and more have launched a 20 million fund to further develop the Avalanche ecosystem with a focus on DeFi, NFTs, infrastructure, and tooling. However, as we see here, this pales in comparison to the massive liquidity incentive program worth 180 billion that Avalanche called Rush, as you can see here has launched recently. What's the goal of this entire uh, DeFi incentive program? The goal is to of this program is to bring blue chip DeFi projects to Avalanche to drive adoption of the ecosystem. And as you can see on the picture itself, multiple ones have been showing interest and they are joining the program, which is Curve and which is SushiSwap and which is Avi. So more will likely follow in the near future as the program has only been announced last month. This strategy could uh, develop into a bigger, um, a bigger program and also design the entire ecosystem. This move comes shortly after the launch of the Avalanche Bridge, which makes it possible to transfer funds between Avalanche and other chains. And discussing all the chains, we can also see the entire DeFi that's being locked up in uh, Avalanche at this point. And we can see that after the recent news regarding the 180 million that's being used for the DeFi incentive program, we can see that we've had a big shot upwards with the amount of total value locked in the uh, ecosystem, which is currently rallying towards 3.6 billion. Recent high has been 3.8 billion, and right now we're at 3.6 and the entire amount of TVL in crypto is around 160 billion. Also, the number of monthly added projects will likely increase heavily with at this point in time, we can see that there is 327 projects in 12 months started in the AVAX ecosystem and that's growing even faster and could be even growing faster with all the bridges and the incentive program. So as an opinion on the pro on this uh, ecosystem itself and Avalanche uh, overall, it's a great blockchain solution for both DeFi and Enterprise due to the fast transactions, low cost and customizable blockchains. DeFi and its users are moving beyond only Ethereum, although this will likely remain to be the biggest one uh, at this stage. The future will likely see a number of successful smart contract platforms and Avalanche could be one of them and is actually trying to become one of them. Current incentive program brings DeFi blue chips and users could kickstart growth heavily. Others like Phantom are doing this as well. We'll have to see whether Avalanche can keep users within the ecosystem as others also have these programs. Looking at the price itself, we have been discussing this overall. We have been stating levels that you should be watching and usually what you're doing, you're looking at levels based on previous price action. We tried to dive into that when Avalanche was correcting towards almost $30 earlier in the month. However, we did not entirely hit the level, but we did hit the previous support resistance flip as well. So you would have been scaling in. Right now, we can see that the chart is running up significantly. So what levels should you be watching? Well, I think the beautiful support resistance flip is gone for now. 
um, as that entry point has been hit and since then AVAX is usually bouncing back the fastest however if you want to look at uh, potential entry points you're still going to look around 59 bucks and then second you're going to look at the area that we have around 65 dollars what is a potential next target point well you can use the Fibonacci extension for that and then we might be even being ready towards 125 bucks and I think multiple projects are ready for 100 bucks Avax is one of them but also Cosmos is ready for it and Polkadot itself as well so that is the price action on Avalanche at this point looking at the entire ecosystem we are not only having Avalanche but there is more in that ecosystem and one of them is Avalanche which is an interoperable token pools and auctions for the Avalanche blockchain project so it's just a launch pad and it's actually the first one that's being built on uh, Avalanche in the entire Avalanche ecosystem the launchpad is backed by Ava Labs, creator of Avalanche. Four of the core team members of Ava Labs are advisors to Avalanche. They have been working together from early on in the dis uh, development phase of Avalanche. And if you want to know more about Avalanche, check out the interview that is on the YouTube channel that I've been having with the CEO of Avalanche. It also has multiple Orion Protocol team members and Orion Protocol provides a non-custodial gateway to the entire digital asset market. It aggregates liquidity from DEXs from multiple ec ecosystems and in the future sectors as well. Um, so the product itself can be used for staking. So if you hold Avalanche, you get Xava and a Xava you can stake and with staking Xava you can get uh, IDO allocation so for some new projects which we will be discussing after and also Xava tokens from ecosystem rewards and also from platform fee red redistribution so that is the the key fa features of Avalanche at this point my opinion personally about Avalanche will likely start to play an important role in the launch of new promising projects on Avalanche due to the relation with the core team of Ava Labs might also become interesting with Orion offering other opportunities but that is still very early to say offers a great solution for people to get into the vetted product projects on Avalanche at an early stage so looking at the price action it usually starts to follow Ava Avalanche at this stage um, it has been very uh, correlated with each other, which is quite normal. I mean, um, that's what you see with other ecosystems as well, with Solana and Serum and everything that's being built on Solana. So right now we can see that we have had a compression period with those two highs. We still make higher lows, through which it's just a matter of time before we're going to crack this recent high, uh, recent high and make new highs. Levels to watch. Well, quite clearly the level to watch is around 335. If that one is lost, we might be looking at 280 and probably the low here around two bucks. Next run, if we continue to run, we can use Fibonacci extension and then we might be facing around towards seven and a half bucks if, for instance, Avalanche will also be doing great. So what projects will be launched on Avalanche at this point and which have been launched at this stage? So. The first one is Yay Games, and Yay Games was the first IDO on Avalanche. And just as a comparison, you all know Axie Infinity, and you know that it is an NFT based play to earn PvP game. It has showcased just how successful crypto can be when it's implemented in games. And crypto and games are a beautiful uh, partnership. Um, the integration of crypto into games is probably the first step forward and after that more segments or more markets will follow through within a short period of time the monthly revenue generated by xv infinity soared as you can see here since the summer it has been accelerating quite fast um, the blue uh, line is the fully diluted market cap and the green one is the total revenue and you can see that the total revenue was approximately 2 million during the beginning of july and it accelerated towards highs of 17 million and since then has been relatively stable by now, the only project in crypto that generates more revenue on a monthly basis is Ethereum. So Axie Infinity is the second one. And the market size of the video gaming market was 175 billion in 2020, with a projected size of 293 billion in 2027. 
play to earn is only just starting while adding more a lot more incentives to play games so it will likely steal a lot of this market share while also increasing the expected growth rate so this is the first avalanche uh, project yay games is oh and there we go yay games the centralized gaming marketplace is a yay games goal is to create an nft marketplace plus amm exchange focused on the gaming industry while at the same time creating an entire ecosystem of different games developed by the team behind yay games um, it aims to combine DeFi with the nft market of gaming so when we are looking at the entire uh, roadmap of uh, yay games at this point we can see several interesting ones we see that they are actually delivering which is step one right but we can also see that there's going to be projects being listed here or being created and one of them is bold point which is going to be released in q4 2021 and also the nft marketplace will be released in quarter four of 2021 and they are going to announce way more games to be released after that so they're just starting up at this point and this is the first real ido and as i just said um the first project is going to be bold point um, and that's the first game to launch on its platform and that's currently being developed by yay games itself it's a decentralized nft based collective nft game that will be linked to yay games marketplace besides earning collecting and trading items on the marketplace they can also be used to upgrade your character and this is your character um, increasing its abilities and therefore its value so the initial so this is the first real initial game that they're going to bring out and there's going to be way more as i just discussed my opinion play to earn is going to be massive it has tons of uh, potential we've only had one big runner which is axie infinity um, and there will be probably coming way more uh, games that will be better and better and for now the question is how good is the ui going to be of those games and if the ui is going to be just as great as the current games i think this is going to take over relatively fast in the coming five to ten years two new ideos that are coming up first one kalau it's coming up relatively soon the actual sale has been taking place kalau is an nft marketplace aggregator built for avalanche with at least two advisors from avalanche Besides being a simple, being simply a marketplace, which is an aggregator, they also want to focus on VR for ad galleries and create its own metaverse. At the center of this metaverse will be the Citadel, where users can buy and rent of plots of land and rooms. They will have customizable avatars as well and play mini games. It is built by a for-profit entity, which will receive 75% of the 2.5% transaction fee. The rest will go to the treasury. The NFT market is also expanding beyond Ethereum and just we discussed um, the entire, um, you can see the VR over here and if you want to check the video you can go to the website of Kalau and check the uh, trailer there if you want to. NFT marketplace engine and as discussed NFT market is not only on Ethereum but we also have it on Solana and Avalanche is creating that themselves. This project will therefore be a very interesting play for the expansion of NFTs. Uh, on avalanche as well as beyond it's as it aims to connect other chains as well and here you can see the citadel which is beautiful so the final one and that's also coming up relatively soon is hurricane swap it will be the next ido after kalao and hurricane swap is looking to become the DeFi hub of the avalanche ecosystem and evolves around a cross-chain trading solution at the core is a dex and cross-train bridge this will allow users to trade assets from other chains on Avalanche in a seamless and cheap way. More cross-chain functionalities will be added in the future. So the next step in crypto and DeFi in particular is connecting the different ecosystem in a seamless way. Hurricane Swap will, could be a good play on both this seamless connection of blockchains as well as the overall DeFi adoption of on Avalanche. So this is my update for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's about 25 minutes on the entire ecosystem of Avalanche, including Avalanche, Yay Games, Kalau, the entire team of Avalanche, and also the entire consensus uh, uh, mechanism within Avalanche itself. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you liked it, 
please let me know in the comments which project I have to do next. And I'll see you again soon tomorrow for a new update. Have a wonderful day.